Welcome to part two of this series about radiant energy. Page 33. By properly adjusting the inherent circuit parameters, Tesla learned how to produce an extremely rapid series of unidirectional impulses on demand. When the impulses were short, abrupt, and precise in their successions, Tesla found that the shocking effect could permeate very large volumes of space with apparently no loss of intensity. I think this is what is um, related to the, the true longitudinal energy. Tesla also found that the shocking effect penetrated sizable metal shields and most insulators with ease. Developing a means for controlling the number of impulses per second, as well as the intermittent time intervals between each successive impulse, he began discovering a new realm of effects. Magic. Page 34. Now, what about this polarity? Because Somehow we all assume that voltage is positive and ground is zero. Yeah, okay, that, that's possible. But we could also use negative voltage with a ground that is zero. And we normally don't do this, but it's a possibility. Why not? It's charge. It's a voltage uh, difference. It's, it's a potential. And here seems to be one thing that really interests me, because um, the voltage difference between the polarity of voltage difference between positive and negative is something that eludes me. But I am really attracted to the negative voltage and making use of it related to the zero ground. I think there's a, 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 a difference between the positive and the negative voltage. The stuttering shockwaves were capable of forcing charges in the direction of their propagation. So he's now talking about this, uh, this pulse he uh, produces in the ether and it, it comes on a coil, for instance, and on the coil it manifests a charge, a voltage. Objects placed near this device became powerfully electrified retaining a singular charge sign for many minutes after the magnetic discharge had been deactivated. Tesla found it possible to amplify these single charge effects by a simple asymmetrical alignment of the magnetic discharger. By placing the magnetic discharger closer to one or the other side of the charging dy dynamo, either force positive or force negative vectors could be selected and projected. Thus, charge could be projected into or drawn from any object in the field space. And this is very important. This is triggering me. This is, this is valuable information. Because what, what it says is, um, by placing the magnetic discharger, so the, the spark grab that is quenched by a, by a magnetic field, closer to one or the other side of the charging dynamo. One or the other side of the charging di dynamo. This means the positive DC voltage or the negative DC voltage. So, the positive and the negative voltage have the effect of charging, how does he call it, either force positive or force negative factors, pushing and pulling is what I read, could be selected and projected. Thus, charge, voltage, could be project projected into charging or drawn from any object in the field space. So objects became charged positive or negative. Charge was drawn away from them or was pushed upon them. Let's proceed. Still on page 34. 
introducing objects into the radiant space gave spectacular effects, becoming surrounded by crowns of white sparks. Objects charged by this apparatus evidence a powerful and permeating charge action, like no other seen before. This was a new electrical force. Tesla realized more than ever that he was in an unknown territory. The fact that these radiant forces traveled as light-like rays distinguished them from the electromagnetic waves of Maxwell. The waves were weak, but these rays were strong, uncommonly strong. Very, very exciting to read this. Okay, let's proceed on page 35. Tesla found that impulse duration alone defined the effect. Tesla observed distinct color changes in a discharge space when each impulse range had been reached or crossed. So now we're talking about the time it takes for the capacitor to discharge. And this time is essential to get different radiant energy effects. Trains of impulses each exceeding 0.1 millisecond duration, so 100 microseconds, produced pain and mechanical pressures. In this radiant field, objects visibly vibrated and even moved as the force field drove them along. It's very interesting this. So we're not talking about frequency. We're talking about impulse time. If we re refer back to uh, a square wave, 50% duty cycle, uh, it has a certain um, frequency, but that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about the duty cycle of the impulse. And as I said before, it's less than 1%, but now we're talking about microseconds. Thin wires exposed to sudden bursts of the radiant field exploded into vapor. Pain and physical movement ceased when impulses of 100 microseconds or less were produced. So when the impulse time was 100 microseconds or less, then there was no physical pain anymore. And it's really important for myself, although I don't in intend to use very energetic discharges because I want to experiment, man. I don't want to blow everything up. <laughs> With impulses of one microsecond duration, strong physiological heat was sensed. And this is interesting because this is one of the effects where Tesla could feel uh, 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 like a heat wave through his body. That was very comforting. And this is an area which could be used uh, medically for the benefit of the health of a subject. But that's not my research su subject at this time. So if anybody wants to uh, find out, please do and share it with us. It's very, very valuable, this information. I might conduct these, these uh, experiments myself in the future, but I'm staying focused. I've got a vision. Further decreases in impulse brought spontaneous illuminations capable of filling rooms and vacuum globes with white light. Now this is magical. <laughs> Here there's a statement and you can find back in the lectures that Tesla gave um, that he could light, he could fill a room with light and not from a lamp, no, the room itself was lit. Imagine that the sky around you, the, the air you breathe, uh, is luminous. And this was produced, here it says, by using impulses of one microsecond duration. So that's very short, but they can be even less short. Cool room penetrating breezes with an accompanying uplift in mood and awareness. <laughs> I, w I, I wish this is all true and I'm really gonna find out because it's 
so inspiring to read all of this information. Let's just find out, man. Let's experiment and if you're not gonna do it, I will surely do. And I will share it with you all because we deserve the truth about Nikola Tesla. We deserve the truth about what electricity really is. Because do we understand it? Page 35. Furthermore, shocking waves of 100 microsecond duration pass through all matter. So this is really uh, interesting if you want to broadcast energy through stones and metal objects and cities. This is something else than the classical te Tesla coil we all know so well. It's really different. We're talking about the dielectric field again. The dielectric field is built up in the conductor surrounding the conductor. And then a collapse of the dielectric field would uh, occur. This collapse was necessarily very much shorter than the intervals required to charge the loop. And this is again, um, you use a current to charge and, and make a positive change and then you make a negative change that is very abrupt and, and short. This way uh, the ether movement is very pronounced by the, the, the fast discharge and not by the fast charge. Because if you also would use a fast charge then the effect would be zero again. You, you have to have a difference in, in, in pressure and not going back and forth but only forwards or only backwards, only pushing or only pulling. So a slow charge and a fast discharge. Or if you prefer it, a fast charge and a slow discharge, because that's possible as well, but a little bit harder. The collapse comes when the magnetic disruptor extinguishes the arc. If this circuit is properly structured, no backrush alternations ever occur. So there's no, no reversal. This unidirectional succession of charge discharge impulses causes a very strange field to expand outward. And here's that magic again. A field, a strange field expanding outward. So it builds up in space. Tesla had discovered a new induction law. I'm going to per page 36 now. A new induction law, one where radiant shock waves actually auto intensified when encountering segmented objects. Auto intensified. It automatically intensified its effects when encountering segmented objects and segmented objects can be uh, a coil uh, with loose windings. The segmentation was the key to releasing, releasing the action. Radiant shock waves encountered a an helix and flashed over the outer skin from end to end. The shock wave did not pass through the windings of the coil at all, treating the coil surface as an aerodynamic plane. And this intensified the, the, the whole effect. Very interesting. Tesla further discovered that the output voltages were mathematically related to the resistance of turns, turns in the helix. Higher resistance meant higher voltage maxima. Tesla measured a zero current condition in these long copper secondary coils. Zero current condition. Zero current means there is no magnetic field the absence of a magnetic field, but still the electrical energy is permeating. The most efficient Tesla transformations were obtained only when the disruptive radiating wire line equaled the mass of the helical coil. So what he's saying here is that the disruptive circuit, the primary and the secondary, the, the helical coil should be equal mass. Now, that's very easy to do because if you make a bifilar Tesla coil, uh, like I showed in one of my videos, uh, you just use the same wire and use the same length, make two coils, 
One's primary, one is secondary, and you, they're guaranteed to be the same mass. And then page 38, the effects go on. White flimmering laminar streams. I like it. It's like, it's so poetic. Furthermore, whenever a metal point was connected to the upper terminal of one of his transformers, the stream became more directive. It behaved just like a stream of water in a pipe. When the white flimmering stream was directed at distant metal plates, it produced electronic charges. This charge production could be measured as amperage, current, at the reception side. So now we're back to traditional electric current. When, you, when we take this radiant energy discharge and you direct it with a pointy needle-like structure and you point it at a metal plate, then on the plate was not only voltage but a current was produced. That's transmission of electrical energy and not by induction, not by magnetic induction. Maybe we should call this dielectric induction. I mentioned this before and I never really understood what it should be, but this would be dielectric induction. Very interesting. Yes. <laughs> Still on page 38. The electricity with which he was familiar was shocking, hot, burning, deadly, piercing, stinging, all the attributes of an irritant. So that's the classical, classical uh, feeling we get when you stick your fingers into the, the wall socket. Don't do that. If you never felt it, you don't want to feel it. It's horrible. But this discharge phenomenon was whether cool or warm to the touch soft and gentle so it's not lethal it's healthy you can feel the radiant energy touch it and don't get shocked that's very interesting man again uh, the healing aspects of radiant energy this is so this is so on another level page 39 i'll proceed tesla realized why there was no measurable electrical current at the crown of these activated coils. The normal heavy charge carriers could not travel as quickly as the radiant pulse itself. Page 39. It was the abruptness, the violence of the impulse discharge which gave free mobility to this unexpected gaseous component. Page 40. Impulses, unidirectional impulses, were the only means by which these potentials could be unlocked. Okay, we're, we're, we're getting there. Page 41. Macroscopically, radiant shockwaves behaved as a gaseous impulse having electrical characteristics. So it's, it behaved like a gas, but it has electrical properties. Page 42. These white and highly vibrant displays lacked the blue and stark jaggedness commonly associated with sparks, termed electric. So here's this, this distinction from classical electricity, the spark that we all know, the bluest purple uh, thunderstrike which I love, I, I love looking at thunderclouds. Thank you for watching part two of this series about radiant energy. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time.